The Gorilla Health Project is a project aimed at understanding, figuring out how to treat, and ultimately prevent diseases in the zoo populations of gorillas. There are 342 gorillas in 52 zoos in North America. So Bebek and Makolo are western lowland gorillas. There are two species of gorilla, western gorillas and eastern gorillas, and within that there are two additional subspecies. So western gorillas live in western Africa, just like their name implies, um, and they come from countries like Cameroon, Central African Republic, um, the Republic of Congo. These are countries that are right along the equator in Africa and are often in forest um, habitats. They might also live in some swampy areas. Let me give you some vital statistics about Bebek and Makolo. Um, they're actually more middle-aged or older males. Bebek will actually turn 29 this year. He's 28 right now. Um, and Makolo, although younger at 25, he's actually the more dominant male. And when you look at the two, you can see a little bit of a difference between the two of them. Makolo, although younger, is much larger. He actually weighs about 410 pounds, and you can see by looking at him that he's got a larger body size, real strong muscles. And Bebek, although older, he's a little bit smaller in stature. So he weighs more like 370 pounds, um, and he's a little bit shorter overall. But if you look closely, you can see things not only like their body size, but also the shape of their nose is very unique. Every gorilla has a differently shaped nose. In our, ca in our case with Bebek and Makolo, Bebek has a very straight brow ridge. And so I can tell right from looking at their faces which one's Bebek and which one's Makolo. Makolo has more of a dip. So you can come and try to see if you can tell the difference between the two of them. Bebek and Makolo are ambassadors for their species. It is our hope that when um, visitors come to the zoo and meet our gorillas, that they'll stop for a minute and think, wow, they're really kind of like us, and maybe ask some questions about where do they come from in the wild, and even maybe what can I do to help gorillas in the wild. Uh, we first identified that uh, the gorillas both had heart disease uh, back in 2008 when we had uh, cardiac ultrasounds performed on each individual. Cleveland Metro Parks really initiated the Gorilla Health Project, which started out as a, a, um, pulling together the information on health, husbandry, and nutrition of gorillas across zoos in North America. So from that information, we were trying to tease out what might be causing um, heart disease and also help us figure out what we could do to help treat it. Um, the information that comes out of there helps us to make decisions such as um, how can we take better care of the gorillas themselves? Um, what are some of the ways that we can either improve diets or treat them when they're ill or increase their activity levels so that they stay healthier and they can then live longer and happier lives? The concept <clears throat> came out of a meeting held at Brookfield Zoo that pulled together veterinarians, physicians, nutritionists, pathologists, um, keepers and curators, people who work daily with gorillas, um, and epidemiologists to ask the question of why are we seeing heart disease. Um, Smithsonian National Zoo had recently had several deaths of gorillas who had died with heart disease and that really spurred us on to look at it. Is it, a, is it a new problem? Is it an emerging health problem? Is it something that has gone undetected for a while? So that made us realize that by pulling all this information together, not only would we be able to address heart disease, we could um, gain information on other health problems. Once we diagnose heart disease in each of the gorillas, um, we put them on some medications to start initially. Uh, with Makolo, because his condition wasn't as severe, he was just started on one medication to help lower his blood pressure a little bit. Uh, with Bebek, because he had more significant heart disease, we actually started him on three different medications to try and manage his condition a little bit better. They're actually the same medications that um, human cardiologists would use in uh, people to manage heart disease, uh, just because the physiology is pretty similar. So we have information on heart disease, but we don't have information on, oh, when did it begin? So we've started prospectively looking at that. So monitoring our young guys, looking at them before they develop heart disease to try and track it and if we can prevent it. When we ultrasounded each individual gorilla, um, we were able to see varying degrees of heart disease. Um, with Makolo, he had less severe um, heart disease, pretty mild actually. Uh, just the left side of his heart uh, was slightly thickened but really didn't have any scar tissue formation yet. 
Uh, Bebeck was a different situation. His condition was much more severe. Uh, the left side of his heart was much thicker, and he had some significant uh, scar formation already in his, in his heart. What the scar tissue does is create the heart, a little bit harder uh, workload for the heart. So over time, they can develop arrhythmias, uh, even go into heart failure. So it, it can definitely compromise their long-term health. Initially, we um, worked with them to uh, be able to do heart rates voluntarily, where we used a small Doppler probe. Um, the keepers, uh, with the uh, veterinary technicians, trained the gorillas to present their chest. Uh, we were then able to put that probe onto their chest. The cardiac ultrasounds that we're trying to work on right now, we've been working on since fall. It's a much more involved procedure in that the gorillas have to present their chest for a longer period of time. There's um, a little bit more pressure with the um, probe that we're using. Uh, so it just takes a lot more from the gorillas to really get what we're asking. But they're, they're definitely coming along really well. So ultimately for them, because they sort of came into the program with heart disease, it's we're not going to be able to prevent it in them, we're not going to be able to fix it in them. But with the Gorilla Health Project and the information we're gaining from it, we've identified it. So we, we through their cardiac ultrasounds, know they have heart disease. We've had good um, treatments for them, so we know that's being effective and we've actually seen improvement in their behavior from from their treatments. So those things are helping them manage their heart disease so that they can live a long and happy life. For each gorilla, uh, it, it differs. Um, for Bebeck, because his condition was a little bit more severe, um, we wanted to really follow up and see you know, how that had progressed. And when we ultrasounded him again in 2009 and 2011, his condition had stabilized. So much so that we were actually able to discontinue one of the medications, such that he's now maintained on just two medications. Uh, with Makolo, um, it was a little bit of a different story. In 2009, his condition was actually found to have gone from mild to a more moderate uh, cardiac disease. Uh, so he was started on an additional medication such that when he was checked again in 2011, his condition had stabilized. It also coincided with a diet change that had occurred in 2009 to help them lose some weight and make them a little healthier overall. So with the diet change and the medication, it really seemed to um, help them overall. Uh, gorillas in the wild will basically move to find food. I mean, that's one of their main moving activities is to find food. Uh, they actually do a lot of resting in the wild, uh, but, uh, which is certainly something we'll see in, 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 uh, in zoos as well. But uh, the, uh, they will move to find food. So uh, the, the, the amount that they move on any given day sometimes depends on the food availability of the group, uh, or they may move for safety reasons. Um, in zoos, uh, they don't have to worry about finding food because we're going to give them food. Uh, but we try to uh, use that food presentation to make it a little more of a challenge to them, whether we give it to them scattered throughout their exhibits in places that they have to kind of work at to get to, or they, uh, we may give it in things like uh, uh, cardboard boxes or in logs or uh, items that they <clears throat> kind of have to work, excuse me, they have to work a little bit to, to get to the food. They pretty much eat the same thing every day. It, the diet has um, been analyzed for its nutritional content. It's totally greens based. And by greens, I mean they get endive, romaine, and dandelion greens. They also get alfalfa, and they get green beans, fresh green beans every day. Gorillas love to eat. They're very food motivated. And so the fact that we can, we can draw out their eating time with this kind of diet is, is uh, very beneficial to them. We have found with this diet that their foraging time has increased. It's uh, about 60% of their time is spent foraging and what we're really happy about is that's what wild gorillas are thought to do, spend about that much time foraging for food. And they still do get a little bit of fruit but it's strictly for medication and um, training. They accepted this diet pretty well and um, they actually do seem to really enjoy a lot of the items in it and they um, started losing weight and we were monitoring their weight weekly and we were actually very pleased because gorillas tend to get overweight when they mature and it's hard to keep weight off of them. Makolo lost about 50 to 60 pounds and Bebeck lost about 30 to 40 but he's a little bit smaller animal so it was quite a bit and it was gradual you know it, it kind of fell off him over time if we if we couldn't weigh him I you know we would have never implemented this diet but before we started the diet change we scale trained them and so we monitored their weight very closely when given the choice gorillas like to sit around uh, so we have to kind of stimulate them uh, to uh, to be more active 
Uh, another thing we do with our gorillas, especially in the wintertime uh, here in Cleveland when they are inside, is that we'll take several times a day, we'll, we will uh, do what we call A to B's essentially, which is move them from the exhibit down into holding, and then back up in the exhibit, back down to holding, just to kind of give them some exercise on the uh, 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 back and forth during the day. Uh, our goal here is to, to uh, bring out the natural behaviors that all these animals have. Uh, that's what we want to uh, encourage here at the zoo. And in that process of uh, bringing out those natural behaviors, we provide them an activity that makes them healthier. And then, uh, so it's a, phys a physical stimulus and also a mental stimulus because uh, when we make things a little more difficult, we have to, they have, sometimes they have to use their head to figure out how to get to things. So uh, it's just uh, providing mental, physical stimulation uh, through natural behaviors. So in the next three years, we really want to, we've worked on defining normals for heart disease, so getting cardiac ultrasound definition. We want to be able to follow these animals, both affected and unaffected, to look at changes. We need to um, monitor the treatments we've been using. We've just really started treating heart disease, so making sure that those treatments work effectively and maybe figure out how to tweak them. And really um, trying to tease out the underlying causes of the heart disease. We've been investigating several things like um, blood pressure and cholesterol levels and looking at connections to diabetes. So all of these are ongoing research projects that we hope to pull together answers. One thing we do here at Cleveland Metro Park Zoo is give every person who purchases a ticket a token and they can participate in our Quarters for Conservation program. And this means that um, they can actually ch uh, vote to support or have their quarter go to help a guerrilla conservation project.